hey guys, it feels like literally ages since I've done a live stream, but something really exciting happened to me this week. Yes, I got one of these in the post. Can you see that? That is um, a test for COVID-19 antibodies. So it takes 10 minutes to do this test. So we're gonna do it now, and then we're gonna wait 10 minutes for the results, and I'm gonna try and fill that time with waffle. So this is the test here. Um, hi Sapphire, this is the test here and then I'm gonna kind of like, oh, I just need to, there we go, I'm gonna do it here. So, I've read the instructions already. I would like to say I know what I'm doing, but I did used to work in a lab, so I'm quite used to doing labby things. It took me a while to find the instruction booklet because it's this massive leaflet, which obviously, of course, I just ignored as not very interesting, but no, this is actually the nine step leaflet and then we need to kind of like clean my finger where's that bit that's uh with the alcohol swap so um should i make flashcards yes flashcards are a really really good idea so cleaned finger with alcohol wipe it's a tidy dispose of things then i need to get the yellow little bit, they provide two of these, they call them lancets, um, so that if it doesn't, like if you don't get enough blood the first time round, you can have another go. But it says use the yellow one, so twist it, I've already wiped my finger, nice clean finger, make a droplet of blood. I'm fairly sure when they envisaged people doing this, it was slightly more organised than what I'm doing now. So taking the lid off, I've got the lancet here, pop that over there, and then stab myself. Ouch, okay, that hurts. So we're, right, I've now stabbed myself. We can see blood. I probably should have put a warning on this about there being blood. I then, I have read the book here, I promise, already. But a little droplet of blood. I now need to squeeze it to make a big droplet of blood. Oh god, this is like, I'm sure there's a whole YouTube section of people squeezing spots, but kind of like that. Big droplet of blood, and I need to put it in the sample pot. I just need to squeeze this a bit more because I don't think this is going to be enough blood. Ugh. Blood. Right, in the sample spot. More blood. More blood, uh, load of blood. Right, blood in there. Then they've handily provided you the cotton warmth. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm really sorry, Sam. I definitely should have put some kind of warning on this. There we go, blood, done. And then you get a little bottle of buffer. This is properly like um, being back in the, in the lab. I'm still bleeding. They also provide you with a handy plaster to stop you bleeding all over everything. So let's put on the handy plaster before I bleed all over everything. Good. Uh, now the initial like pinprick didn't hurt that much, but having squeezed all the blood out of it, my finger is now a little bit sore. Right. Blood in sample spots, handily labelled S and drawn a picture of. Then we need to put the buffer, which is this bit here, into bit B and wait 10 minutes. Two drops to the circular well at the bottom. Right, I'm just going to put that, can people see that there? Right, two drops of buffer. One, two. Um, and then uh, we wait 10 minutes. So um, I can see that I'm four minutes 20 into this live stream. So I will tell you the results at 14 minutes 20. And I'll just leave it there. I'm not sure you can actually see anything happening. It looks a little bit like um, a pregnancy test. Um, so I can see lots of you asking how I got this. I didn't purchase it. It just arrived in the post. I got a letter saying, um, you know, you randomly selected because you're registered with the GP. Do you want to take part in the survey? And I was like, oh my God, this is so exciting because this is literally the most exciting thing that's happened to me 
four weeks because, you know, I'm not breaking lockdown. I'm not going anywhere. Um, so I logged onto the website and yeah, yeah, sure. I'll stick a needle, stick a prick in my finger. That sounds really, really wrong. And then the other day it just arrived through the post with instructions and thingy bobbies. And um, we will see if I have had COVID-19 because this is an antibody test. So it will tell me whether I've had it um, recently or in the past. There are two different um, types of antibodies. Um, I did read this earlier to tell you what the results. So IgM don't stay in the body for very long. So this is if I've had it recently, not IgG, which are usually longer lasting. So if I've had it like a long time ago. Now I don't think I've had it. Um, however, I haven't been shielding or anything, shielding or anything. I have been out of the house. Um, so there is a possibility that I could have had it. Um, back in March when this all started, I know lots of people that went down with it like the week after lockdown. So kind of like that last week in March. Um, people that I've been chatting to at school, you know, back then when we kind of like, well, we were staying away from each other, but you know, we weren't, you know, properly in lockdown. So I was socialising with people that had it the week after I was socialising with them. So just after we went into lockdown. So I could have got it then, but I wasn't symptomatic or no lying. There was one afternoon where I had a little bit of a cough and then it went away and I was kind of like, well, this is it. Oh no, it's not it because the next day I was like, fine. Um, but obviously that I wasn't going anywhere. Um, and then in September we went to Legoland and I came back with the worst cold ever. I mean, this cold literally wiped me out for about three weeks. However, I didn't have any COVID symptoms. I had loads and loads of, I've got really bad cold symptoms. So I was really snotty and sneezy and disgusting. Um, but I literally, it was the worst cold I've ever had in my whole entire life. And I really struggled to get out of bed for about three weeks. Now I know that sounds like you should definitely be COVID, but I didn't have any COVID symptoms at all. Um, my son did start coughing in September, so we kept him off school. He got tested and was negative. Um, my other son's class, the bubble popped a few times because there were a few positive cases, but like, I don't think I've had it. I really don't think I've had it. Um, but on the other hand, I'm still popping out to Tesco to buy chocolate, mainly chocolates. I mean, my diet is literally about 50% chocolate at the moment. I know some people during lockdown, um, like started doing like catch to 5k and being losing loads of weight and being ready. To, no, not me. I just ate chocolate, still eating chocolate, literally ridiculous. So, um, I don't think I've had it, but on the other hand, I'm not shielding or anything i have been going out to tesco um but i'm not like meeting up with anyone for exercise or anything <laughs> exercise <laughs> um or anything like that i'm literally just staying in the house so i'm kind of like don't think i've had it but i don't know however the results of this if it does come back positive doesn't mean that i'm like immune or anything it just means that the results come back positive um, so yeah, that, that's what we're doing here. What are we at? 8 40. So we've got another, oh gosh, another six minutes until we get the results. Okay. One line has changed color, which means the test result is working. Extra fries. Yeah, definitely extra fries. Oh, I tried to go through McDonald's drive through the other day and the tills broke. <laughs> Literally, that was like the highlight of my day. The kids were all excited, we were in the car. And then I was literally like two away from ordering and the tills broke. Harry, you got an offer from Oxford. That is brilliant. Well done. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, maths at A-level is easier than GCSE, potentially. Um, yes, loads, loads more A-level chemistry stuff. So the whole course for A-level chemistry is up and ready on my website. That is ready to, to go, to use straight away. Courses for A-level maths is off my website. A-level biology um, is a little bit slow still because I'm just busy homeschooling at the moment, but there is loads and loads of stuff up and still um, coming. 
do I think mini exams will go ahead? Connor, that is a really good question. Um, there's this whole talk about these kind of like, you know, externally set assessments, which are not exams, they're externally set assessments, which your teachers are going to mark without being paid to mark them. Um, I don't know. I just really don't know anymore. I'd like to have an opinion, but then get old Gavin changes his mind every two seconds and doesn't tell anyone and then makes an announcement about it and expects everyone to respond immediately. Um, more videos on WJC, yes, lots and lots coming. I've just got the courses for GCSE Science up for WJC, um, yet. Should you keep revising for your mocks? Yes, yes, unfortunately, you should probably still keep revising. It's not like last time, um, when there was a deadline for when, like, the government said, this is when, um... This like, up to this point, that's when you can take count of what students have done. Um, no, we actually don't know when um, the the deadline for assessing students will be. So yes, I think you should still keep revising. Um, there's a question that flashed past again uh, about natural sciences or um, medicine. I actually really, really like a natural sciences degree. It lets you do lots of different things. It lets you get to pick and choose. Um, however, the disadvantages are that you might not actually get onto the module that you really desperately want to. Um, however, I just really like the idea of natural sciences degrees. I think they're brilliant. Oh, do I think sixth form is better or college? They are like chalk and cheese. Some of them are better for one things and other things others. Sixth forms are better for some things. Colleges are better for other things. So, like, sixth form, if it's a touch of school you've been to for a whole time, you might feel a bit more comfortable there. But if you want to spread your wings a little bit, experience new things, going to the local college might be better. Um, the local college might offer more subjects, which you might not be able to do at your school. Um, so there's no, this one is better than the other one. It's very, very individual choice. There are lots and lots of really good things. Do, I think we're going back in March. Oh, I really, 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 really hope so. Um, do I honestly think school's going back in March? Probably not. I say this like I'm crying on the inside as I say this. Um, anyway, what will happen if we don't go back to school? Um, I will eat the world's supply of chocolate. Um, yeah, it's a hard one. Try and keep up with as much as you can with your online lessons. I know that, um, you know, for us in our household, it was just getting a bit too much. So we actually bunked school today and I dyed my kids hair blue. <laughs> you know, sometimes you literally just have to take a mental health day and not do so just do as much as you can how can you be preparing for starting a levels that is a really really good question um the best thing you can do for starting a levels is to finish the gcse course so i know like say for example a level maths um even if you're not setting the gcse in it do the papers pretend you are actually sitting the exams that is the best thing that you can do for um preparing for a level maths and then i've got loads and loads of stuff over on my website for kind of like um getting you started like a summer start course for a level maths and then um if you're doing like biology or languages then start making flashcards of the keywords and stuff like that if you're doing history or english something that has a lot of reading take the book and read it for fun um, how many hours a day should I revise? That is a good question. Um, it depends on what other stuff you've got going on, how much time your school gives you to revise. Um, I would say this time of year, I would generally be revising about an hour and a half, two hours a day in the evening, like taking into account like how much homework you've got that day. So if you've got like two hours of homework, I don't expect you to do two hours of revision, maybe do kind of like half an hour of revision. Um, but also if you've got a lot of really intense homework, you can do some kind of like low intensity revision. So kind of like making flashcards is a really good thing. Going through flashcards is a really good thing. Um, and then you're a bit more um at the weekends uh so it's a question that flashed past these are going through really quickly about doing um 
science A levels if you've only done combined science and not separate science. Um, yes, you can, but be aware there will be a whole massive chunk of content that other people in the class would have studied that you won't have studied. So that is a really useful thing that you can do over the summer holidays and actually kind of like top yourself up to the um, separate science content. And I've just seen that we're in time. I don't know, what do you think? Positive or negative? I don't know what to think. It is negative. Here we go. Oh, my finger. So that, the C is the control. So that tells you um, that the test is working. And the IgM and the Ig... I can't get this in focus. The IgM and the Ig... Uh, G will tell you kind of like the, the antibodies, but there are no lines there, so it is negative. So I have not had COVID-19. Um, I don't know how I feel about this. I didn't think that I had. It would have been nice if I had it and I was completely asymptomatic if we hadn't noticed. That would literally be the dream. Um, but I haven't had it because this test is negative. Where did I get that? It just randomly arrived through the post as part of a study from Imperial. Um, there we go. I've not had COVID-19. Um, will we have spring science calls? Yes, probably. What will happen if we don't um, return to grading? Um, that's a really good question. Um, and I can't really answer that because we there, there is no answer yet. The off-call consultation is still going on until... Friday or Sunday, um, you, but it's definitely still open at the moment. Um, so it's either going to be centre assessed grades again, or externally set assessments, or a combination of something, or they're just going to pick something out of the air like they did last year. I know that Wales were going to have externally set assessments and have now switched to centre assessed grades. So I could tell you something, and then tomorrow there could be an announcement saying it is all wrong. Um, however. Do I think Year 11s will finish in May, June? Yes, I actually think Year 11s will keep going until the end of the school year and that they're going to push the assessment back as late as they can because what they did last year is they stopped Year 11 in March and then everyone had months of sitting around the house with nothing to do, which is not good for your mental health. Um, it's not good for the other people at home because they have to keep you entertained um, and it was just really not good. So I think they will actually keep Year 11s and Year 13s going right until the end. Sure, yes, email your MP about the exam changes. Email as many MPs as you can. Can I do your assignments for me? No. Partly because I'm currently homeschooling my primary children and I had to look up what the difference between a pronoun and a proper noun was. Still don't actually care. Um, so definitely don't want me doing any of your English work for you. Right, um, that is it now. I am a bit sad that I'm negative, but not necessarily very surprised. So bye, guys. Let me work out this.